In this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve the heat transfer problem from lecture, uh, where I ask you to mix coffee and milk and calculate the final temperature. Um, so the first thing I like to do when I solve problems is to write down all of the information that I know. So let's begin by writing down some information. So I, you were told that the coffee is at an initial temperature of 95 uh, degrees Celsius and that the volume of a cup of coffee is around 240 milliliters. Uh, additionally, you were told the specific heat of water, uh, which is what we're going to use for the coffee, uh, because our coffee is mostly water. So we know the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius, per degree Celsius. So uh, additionally, we also know the density. So we know the density of water is going to be one gram per milliliter. Uh, what else do we know? We're told that we're going to be pouring a little bit of milk into our coffee. Uh, the milk has an initial temperature of about two degrees C. Uh, and the volume we're putting in is just a little splash, so it's about 20 milliliters. Um, you're also told the specific heat of milk, uh, which is 3.89 uh, joules per gram per degree Celsius. Uh, so basically what that means is that it takes less energy to heat up the milk than it does the water. Uh, but they're relatively close, so it usually takes a lot of energy to heat up water. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So we also know the density of milk. Uh, so the density of milk is 1.033 uh, grams per milliliter. Uh, so of course uh, the milk is more dense than water too. Okay, uh, so to solve this problem, what we're trying to solve is find the final temperature temperature of the mixture. So uh, some things you need to know to solve this problem uh, are the following. So once we mix these two things together, they're both going to reach the same final temperature. So the temperature final is the same for the milk and the coffee. Uh, what else do we need to know? Um, all of the energy that's being transferred here uh, is going to be contained within the system. So all of the energy from the coffee is going to be transferred to the milk until they reach a final temperature. So uh, we express this in class by saying that the uh, energy gained or the heat gained is equal to the minus of the energy lost. Um, so another way to say this is that the the energy that the milk gets is going to be minus the energy that the coffee gives away. Um, we also learned an expression in class for how to calculate this heat. Uh, so the expression I'm going to write over here kind of look like this. So we know that Q equals to the specific heat times the mass of the system times the change in temperature. Um, so we're going to use this to solve uh, for our final temperature here, because remember the change in temperature is the, the temperature final minus the initial temperature. So that's delta T. Uh, so using all of that information, we're going to be able to get to the bottom of this final temperature. Um, so let's begin evaluating our equation here. Uh, so, so the Q of the milk is going to be equal to this expression, so I'm going to say uh, the specific heat of the milk. I'm just going to put a subscript M for milk uh, times the mass of the milk and then times I'm going to put this uh, expression in here. So the final temperature of the whole system minus the temperature, the initial temperature of the milk. I'm going to call that Tm and that's going to be equal to the specific heat of the coffee with a minus sign. So be careful about this minus sign. If you forget it, uh, you're going to come out with the a wrong answer, and it's going to look kind of strange, actually. So, yeah, I'm going to use the subscript C for coffee. So we're looking at the specific heat of the coffee uh, times the mass of the coffee, and then times, once again, the final temperature uh, minus the initial temperature of the coffee. I'm going to call that TC. So the thing we're trying to solve for is this TF. Um, 
So all we have to do kind of is rearrange this expression to isolate the final temperature by itself, and then we can plug in all of our known variables to get to the final temperature. Um, so I'm going to go through the steps of that very briefly. Um, it's going to look really messy, but uh, in the end it'll be easier when we evaluate. So uh, let's begin. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply this expression through by the constant that's out in front. So it's going to look something like this. I'm going to say the specific heat of the milk times the mass of the milk times Tf, and then uh, Cm times mm times the temperature of the milk. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So once again, be really careful with this minus sign because uh, you need it to get the correct answer. So I'm going to say it's minus the specific heat of the coffee times the mass of the coffee uh, times T. F, so the final temperature, and then this becomes a plus sign, so it's minus times minus. Uh, so we're looking at the specific heat of the coffee times the mass of the coffee, and then times the temperature of the coffee initially. Uh, so now we just have to isolate all the terms that have TF and all the ones that don't have TF to reduce this expression. So here are all the, the TF terms. Um, these terms don't have uh, the temperature final, so the ones in green. So I'm just going to move all of the red terms uh, to the left side and all the green ones to the right. So uh, this guy stays where it is, so CM, MM, TF. Uh, so we're going to add uh, CC, MC, TF. And then on the other side, this one stays where it is, so CC, MC, TC, and then this guy gets moved over, so it's plus CM, MM, TM. Okay, uh, so the last thing we have to do is factor out this TF on this side. So that's what I'm going to do. So it's TF times CM, MM, plus CC, MC is equal to the right-hand side here. And then I'm just going to divide the right-hand side by this expression here, and we're going to get Tf all by itself. So Cc, Mc, Tc. Yeah, a lot of this video is just me copying. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. So Cm, Mm, plus Cc, Mc. So we have Tf by itself. The last thing I want to do is I want you to notice that we're dealing with masses here. So here's the mass of both systems, uh, but we're only given the density and volume. So I'm gonna replace the mass of whatever component with density times volume. So remember the density was mass over volume. Uh, all I'm doing is multiplying the density times the volume and we're gonna end up with the mass. So all of these terms I have circled in red are just gonna get replaced and they're going to look like this. So this is the density of the coffee times the volume of the coffee, Tc, just like that. And I'm just going to do that throughout the expression. So dm, vm, running out of room, sorry about that, tm. And then the same thing in the denominator. So cm, dm, vm, plus cc, dc, B, C. So this is really our final expression for evaluating the temperature because we know all of the variables in this expression. Uh, so let's move on to the part where we evaluate. Uh, so once again, uh, here's all our known information uh, at the top, and I'm just going to write down our expression that we derived. So the final temperature is equal to uh, specific heat of the coffee density of the coffee, volume of the coffee, times temperature of the coffee, uh, plus uh, the specific heat of the milk, density of the milk, volume of the milk, times temperature of the milk, um, all over the specific heat of the milk, times the density, times the volume, and the same for the coffee, so DC, BC. Okay, so this is the expression we have to evaluate. Uh, we have all our known information here, and I'm just going to show you how to do that 
Uh, we're going to keep track of units throughout to make sure that our answer comes out reasonably. Uh, so let's start. So uh, we're starting with the coffee here. So we know that the specific heat of coffee, which once again we said was the specific heat of the water, is going to be 1.484 uh, joules per gram per Celsius uh, times the density, which is just one gram per milliliter uh, times the volume, which is 240 in this case. Say I'm going to try really hard not to make a mistake when I do this. I know there's a lot of variables. And then the initial temperature uh, of the coffee was 95C. So that's this term. Uh, next, we're going to do the milk. So the specific heat of the milk is 3.89 uh, joules per gram per Celsius times the density, 1.033 grams per milliliter. Uh, times the volume, which is just 20 milliliters. And then finally times the initial temperature of the milk, which is two, two degrees C. Okay, all of that. Uh, now let's do the denominator. So once again, uh, the specific heat of the milk was this guy, 3.89 uh, joules per gram per C times the density, 1.033 grams per milliliter, uh, times the volume. Uh, the volume was 20 milliliters for the milk. Uh, plus a specific heat of the coffee, once again, 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius times the density, which is just one, uh, and the volume which is 240 milliliters. Uh, so let's take a look at how these units cancel. Uh, so in all of these cases, we're multiplying a density times a volume, which will give us a, a mass, which is exactly what we're looking for. And then we're multiplying this mass times this expression here, which cancels out with the mass in that expression. And then finally, we are multiplying this um, expression by this one, so the, the temperature cancels. Uh, so what we're left with in the top is joules. Uh, similar for this expression over here. I'll go through it anyway. So uh, the grams are canceling here. Uh, the milliliters are canceling here. And then the degrees Celsius are canceling here. So we're left with joules in the, in the numerator. Uh, let's look at the denominator. It's something very similar. So the milliliters are canceling. Uh, the grams are canceling, but this time we're left with joules over degrees Celsius. Um, so similar here. The grams cancel, the milliliters cancel, and we're left with joules over degrees Celsius. Uh, so what ends up happening is we're dividing, um, on the top we have joules, and then we are dividing that by joules per C. And what this works out to is degrees Celsius, which is the proper unit. Um, if you were to type all of this into your calculator, uh, what you would get out is the final temperature is about 88 degrees C. Um, which makes sense, because we started off with this huge cup of coffee, we put a little splash of milk in it that was pretty cold, uh, and it it lowered the temperature quite a bit, but not, not too much. So you would expect your answer to come out closer to the coffee than the milk, uh, just from, you know, looking at the expression in mathematics and also from experience. Um, so if you were to leave, if you were to make some sort of mistake, um, with like the minus sign, your answer will probably come out very strange, like you'll get an, a negative answer or something like that. And uh, that would be a hint that, you know, maybe some things went wrong. Um, yeah, so I hope that this was helpful. And if, as always, if you have any questions, let me know.